a 5,000 pound truck, it, it rolls out pretty nice, doesn't it? Is it 5,000 pounds? It is. This, this truck is every bit of 5,000 pounds. Wow. That's what I like about it. You know, you can, it, it feels Road heavy. hugging weight. Yeah. And very smooth ride. Even those are, those are big kind of chunky off-road tires you got in there, right? Welcome to episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Uh, two really fascinating vehicles today. You know, there's been a whole cottage industry of people restoring, bringing back, resto modding, not just cars, but classic off-road vehicles like the Bronco or, you know, workhorses like the F-250 truck. There's a lot of just horrible ones out there. And then there's a lot of companies that just do amazing, incredible work. And uh, Velocity Modern Classics out of Pensacola, Florida is uh, one of them. These are two of their examples. You know, I had my eye on this company for a little bit, and they've done not just one or two, they've done hundreds of Broncos uh, and dozens of vehicles such as this one. Uh, they put modern engines in them, they upgrade suspension. Well, they pretty much do whatever the owner wants. Let's meet Cody Dabney. Cody, come on in. Good to see you, my friend. Now, what is your exact title? Director of Custom Vehicle okay. Operations. Director of Custom, ve custom Vehicle <laughs> Operations. It's like all those fancy titles. Okay. Now, although this is the one we're going to drive and feature, let's talk about this a minute, because this is the vehicle where you guys really made your bread and butter, isn't it, doing Broncos? And you've done hundreds of them, Absolutely. Correct? And, you know, I have to admit when I saw it, you know, a car is like a person. If they have nice posture, they're probably pretty good. You know, something about it, you know. And I just like the way this sits, because I see them sometimes at three inches too high or the two, there's just something that doesn't look right. But you know, my thing is if a vehicle looks right, it's probably pretty close to being right, you know? And this is just a, a very nice job. And you've done literally hundreds of these, is that correct? We have, absolutely. Now, how does it work? Do you search the country, find an old Broncos and fix them up? Or do customers bring their Bronco to you? We actually supply the vehicle for the customer. Oh, okay. So we source them and then build them to the customer specs from the amount of options and available options that we have. And then we build it in a 14 week timeline with okay. a guaranteed start date and a guaranteed completion date. Well, that's pretty good. Cause I know a lot of people, it's been in the shop for, for 18 months. I mean, it's pretty calm. And sometimes it's not the shop's fault. They're waiting for parts or they're waiting for the crate motor or whatever it might be. So when you find one, do you contact the owner and say we found, and he buys it and then brings it to you or do you buy it and then sell the whole deal? We actually have a stock of the vehicles. The oh, okay. customer will contact us. Um, let us know what they're interested in. We'll put together the template for the amount of options and things they're looking for. And then that's when we'll go into the build process. Now, just Broncos, have I had an international harvester or something else with that that's, too? That's a good question. We, we're actually huge fans of the international harvester. We build a lot of Scout 2s, Scout right. 800s. Um, we do not build them in a production aspect, but we will build you a custom scout. Now, do you do straight restoration too, or all resto mod? All resto mod. All resto mod. Okay. Well, d d let's do a quick resto mod update on this. Which which motor does this have? This is the Coyote five liter. No, I don't need to. You can open it here. Right? Yeah. Boy, it's certainly a nice, clean installation. Look at that. And boy, that steering column just clears there. It does. Right? Yeah, it just yeah. clears that. Yeah. And luckily this engine, the headers are a little deeper, so a lot of times the steering box is so close to the headers that it boils the box and the whole thing, you know. Nicely done. And of course, Willwood, those are the brakes to use. We use Willwood on everything. So this is putting out about what, what kind of horsepower? Uh, about 350 the tires, about 480 flywheel. Okay, and what, what chassis are we using? This is an original chassis. Oh, it is an original, so you use the original chassis on the car, okay. Obviously updated springs and shocks. Obviously. It is. Okay. Original transmission? Uh, 4R70 four-speed transmission. Okay. And of course, the choice of interiors and all that. Yeah. Is this a cut car or was this originally a convertible? Uh, it came just like this. You can get a hard top. Right. But we do build the roll cages in-house. They'll have the option between a four-point and a six-point. What this one has is a six-point. Right. And that really stiffens up the whole deal. It, it does, it absolutely. Makes, makes it much more enjoyable to drive. And it's got air conditioning too, which makes, yeah. makes yeah. me laugh. I, I, I find that <laughs> absolutely everything we build has air conditioning. Well, you're in Florida, so yeah, that's what you gotta have. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, it's nicely done. What, what would something like this retail for? Uh, around two hundred sixty-eight thousand. Okay, that's not bad. It's I mean, not. when you figure how much work and effort goes into it, and I imagine you're able to make a profit at that price because of the assembly line 
So you, you got all your stuff lined up, you paid for the parts, right? so you know what it's going to cost you. you. I have so many friends send something to a restoration shop, and the cost of the two-year restoration, the price is doubled because a lot of times it's not the shop's fault. They get the parts, that's gone up, supply chain issues, all that kind of stuff. So, Well, that's nice to know, and I love that here's the start date, here's the finish date. So very cool. So if I buy it on day one, I can buy my plane ticket 14 weeks early and go pick it up. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. You heard it here. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, let's close this up and let's concentrate on the, on the F-250. Now, these have been going strong for a couple of years. This seems to be something more recent in the last five, six years or so. People going back to these big old workhorse trucks and making them more viable. I mean, it's a good looking truck and it almost could be any year from 1970 to now. You know, if you didn't know trucks, you'd think it was a brand new truck, wouldn't you? Because Absolutely. Because trucks don't change a whole lot. But it's got the classic look and the classic style which is really kind of neat. Which motor does this have? Same engine? Same engine, Coyote okay. 5 liter. Okay, and these are brand new Coyote. You're not going to junkyards and finding some teenager crashes, dad's Mustang and you pull yeah. that, no, no. No pull outs, only brand new crate engines. Well, I mean, that's great. So everything is new transmission. So you're essentially getting a brand new drivetrain. Okay, any kind of warranty on that? We warranty what the factory will warranty for us. Right, okay. So if Ford gives you a three year warranty, we give you a three year warranty. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, very good, okay. And we know it's got air conditioning because everything you do has air conditioning. So which, which is more complex to build, this or this? The F-250 is a little more complex. Uh, it's a lot more structure to it. It's a lot more parts. Right. The trim is a little bit harder to get. So in my opinion, yes, these are a little bit more complex. And we don't have nine years of R&D and knowledge behind it right. like we do the Bronco. But we will be building these in 14 weeks just like the Bronco. So do you custom make all this trim here? Because I'm just thinking you buy the trims already there, but most of the times in an old truck, the trims have been ripped off or dented or smashed or whatever, so. All the original style trim on this truck, some is absolutely original to the truck, and some of it is just original style. All the billet components we manufacture in-house. But if I had one of these, I could bring it to you and you could do it, right? Oh, you, yes, you don't have absolutely. To have, your, have you got these in stock too? Or? We do. Wow. Okay. We have over a dozen of these trucks in stock. Well, how many employees do you have? 115. You know, that's great because I love American manufacturing. I love stuff that's made in this country. And the fact that everybody sits at a keyboard now and nobody actually makes anything anymore. I love the fact that all this is coming back. I mean, there's a lot of shops, uh, not obviously as prestigious as yours with as many people, but so who knows, someday they may be if they, if they do the work properly, you know. And it's just fun to see that that's become a whole cottage industry because A, you're recycling a vehicle, so you're sort of, I, I guess, helping to save. But I mean, it, it, you're not buying a new truck, you're fixing an old one. And so instead of sitting in a junkyard rotting somewhere, it, it's really turned into a practical, useful, and really, really attractive vehicle because this is something a guy will keep for 15 or 20 years probably. I agree. Very, very nice. Okay. Is there always a story with these things? You know, guys, my dad had one, my grandpa had one. That always seems to be. This so. is a, a truck that we built for a very good customer of ours. And, you know, he'd gotten wind that we wanted to get into the F Series market. And, of course, it, it made sense for he already had one of our Broncos. So I want you to build me the first F 250. He gave us two or three, you know, opinions of how he wanted it built and just let us run with the rest of it. Um, so is this that vehicle? It is. Oh, yes. cool. So this yes. is the first one you've done. Correct. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, what else do I see? The cab light, were those, did they have those in, in 70 when this was built? They did. They didn't quite look that good though. Right. Okay. <laughs> so those are modern. Okay. And what's, what's the cost of building one? Is it more or less than the Bronco? These start at 285. Okay. And optioned out the way you see this truck, it's 325. Still not bad. I know that it's hard to get your, because when I was a kid, that was two houses, you know. So, so, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. But that's where we are now, and that's where stuff is. I mean, I, I know guys have had 55 Chevys restored, and, and they're paying that much, you know, and you go, really? Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's what it is. So, but it's nicely done. Nicely done. Okay. Uh, you got the gun rack, you're in Florida, you gotta have that. Yes. You gotta yes. have that. Uh, some more features that this has now that it did not have in the day, probably air conditioning. 
Air conditioning's one. Um, the interior speaks for itself. It's yeah. a little fancier than what you'd see in 1970. Yeah, it really um, is. It's got some nice upgraded billet components, um, you know, all the way down to the dash vents, the the parts on the doors. The now the adjustable steering column that was that came into Ford's what in the late 80s, early 90s. Very late 70s, like early. So 80s. do you use a Ford rack, or is that a brand new aftermarket? That is a full aftermarket uh, steering column. Okay, so that's right. an I did it. It, it annoys me when I see those on 32 Fords. I just, it just, I don't know, it rankles me a little bit. Something like this is fine, but when I see a 32 Ford with a flathead and an automatic and it just, I go, okay, no, it's not a 32 Ford. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. Right, right. It's supposed to be, you know, yeah. But, but very cool. Very nicely done. And it costs, oh, I like the way you've integrated the air conditioner. That's obviously a custom piece. We wanted to keep a classic look. You know, even though it has modern features, it, it still feels classic. Well, I used to love that big lunch pail looking air conditioner that fit under the dash. It, it was about this big in a big box. Right. And he turned out. <laughs> did you hear that fan just grinding away? Right. But, it, but they work. But that looks great. And of course, the transfer case and all that custom upholstery. Very nice. Right. Let's open the hood on this one. Well, you got a bit more room to play in this one. And of course, this too, Willwood Disc. Well, did this have um, Dual Masters in 1970? I can try to remember. I think it must have by 1970. By the 70s, yes, they yeah, did. Yeah. Anything you do to this motor other than drop it in? Any, any parts that are unique to you guys that you put on it? Yes, we've actually designed our own proprietary uh, serpentine system. Um, and headers, okay. so it allows us to, okay. to get better fitment in the engine bay. And of course, 1970, since it's an old vehicle, you couldn't put headers on it. Today, you couldn't. And the serpentine, oh, I see, how, yeah. Well, that's that's nicely done, okay. That almost, that, that looks factory to me. Yeah, that was the idea behind it, to have a factory look um, and actually serviceable by any Ford dealership. So that's the beauty of both of these vehicles is, you know, being able to take it anywhere and, you know, it's very serviceable. Yeah, that is a great thing because I have a lot of friends that have it. They have an engine built and it's delivered to the shop and Larry did the head, somebody else did the cam. So but then when the engine breaks, it's all this. Well, your cam, no, your heads are no, we are, but your lifters, you know, so you get it in a crate, you drop it in and you've got 250,000 trouble free miles easy. Very nice. What's the transmission on this one? Uh, 470. So what is that? A, Four right. speed. Four speed mm -hmm. with an overdrive or just four yes. speed? Yes. Okay, four speed. Oh, okay. But overall, it is very clean, serviceable. Anybody can work on it. Basic engine bay. It looks factory, looks OEM, but, but with a classic vibe. So, what's the hardest part when you get one of these? Is it the mechanicals, which seems pretty straightforward because it's all new? Is it all this little stuff that drives you crazy trying to find? grill pieces and all that kind of The bright work is absolutely probably the hardest thing to find yeah, for these yeah. trucks, you know. There's not a lot of aftermarket out there and the, the very little that there is aftermarket, some of it doesn't fit as well. So we had to piece together a lot of the things for this truck to get this overall look. Right. But I would definitely agree the bright work is the hardest thing to, to put together. Yeah. Well, boy, it just looks fantastic. How about sourcing windshields and stuff is all that stuff available or do you guys do you have to go to a custom ground glass guy to make that for you how does that glass work? is all pretty readily available yeah. um the actual you know old school stainless trim that goes around it is far and few between um, i think we had to use trim from three different trucks to piece that together right right so if i wanted one of these what i, I pay you a deposit at week number one and then you said as you sort of go along yeah when we go into our contract process you you definitely put down a deposit and that's when we get started and keep you updated along the way okay and obviously discs all the way around yes uh six piston bears right. um 14 inch rotors and this would have had drums in 70 correct oh absolutely yeah. even on the front because well a lot of people are using f-250s uh I've definitely seen more disc, but yes, uh, yeah. some of the F series F one hundreds definitely had drums all the way around. Yeah, well, nicely done. I think let's let's walk around the back of the vehicle. Oh, I want to show people something I think is kind of fun. Close this, close the hood up here. You go that way, I'll go this way. Well, that's something you never saw back in the day. I remember the Subaru Brat had these seats in the back. Remember that when they? I guess there was some law at the time. You couldn't bring, they couldn't bring the truck in for whatever reason. Although they called it a four a, a sedan or they called it a four-seater vehicle by putting the seats in the back. 
Uh, do these pop out readily to, to use it uh, as a truck? They actually fold up, oh, okay. um, but this was a request from the customer. He wanted his kids to be able to ride in the back of the truck, have <laughs> yeah. a good time. Only in Florida yeah. if you put kids in the back of the truck. Yeah. Absolutely. You try that in L.A., woo, woo, on the guy, <laughs> out of the car, let's go, Pops. <laughs> oh, yeah, but they're very funny, very funny. But it, it certainly looks cool. And that's all vinyl, so it's weatherproof. Uh, and all. Actually, it's leather. We actually use the same materials that we really? use from the oh, inside of the cab to okay. the back. So every yeah. time it rains, just put new seats in. Yeah, yeah, yeah just replace do. them. Okay, okay. Well, you know, it's funny because does it cease to be used as a truck at this point? Is it now sort of just a show vehicle? You know, it seems to me there's almost maybe you could put a liner or something in here if you ever were going to haul logs or do anything with it or firewood or whatever but i, I think this old girl's seen the last of her yeah. work days yeah, but yeah. i think she'll see a lot of enjoyment but yeah yeah we did paint the inside of the bed to give it that original look yeah. you know it's it, it definitely looks classier in my opinion yeah, yeah um but this girl's been put out to pasture for her work days yeah, for there sure you go. well that's it you heard it guys put out to pasture but i mean that's true that's what i would do i mean i have my bronco that we we took to sema and I'm not going off, I'm not, you know, jumping swamps with the thing, you know, I just use it to just drive around for the same sort of reason. Well, it's a beautiful job, you know, you can kind of tell when things are off. You know, I've, I've seen enough vehicles to go, oh, that doesn't look right, you know. But this all looks right, just like the Bronco. I mean, when you, and you've done literally hundreds of these, so you know what the problems are. Can we take it for a ride? Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Get a couple of young'uns, put them in the back, get some gators, go driving around. We're in Florida. Oh, you got the step plate comes out. Didn't have that in 1970. Sure didn't. Yeah. Sounds healthy enough. Kind of miss that old clutch, but hey, what are you gonna do? Yeah, it feels solid though. Right. You know, a lot of trucks you don't want them to feel heavy, but this, this, the heavy feeling is what feels great about Road it. Road hugging weight, they used to call it. <laughs> they used to advertise, you know, cars in the 50s has road hugging weight. Road hugging yeah. weight. I'll it's remember a, that. If you're buying your cars by the pound, you want to get those 50s vehicles. <laughs> you know, I love about older stuff, the small eight pillar. I realize in a rollover, and I, I have so many cars that have this massive A pillar where I'm always doing this. Is, is there a kid in a bike right, right there? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I got a Ford GT in 2005, and the A pillar is massive. And I'm always, when I get on the road, I'm always, is there a kid on a skateboard here? Am I okay? <laughs> you know, I'm just always looking around. Now, whose dash is this? This is obviously not the stock dash. Uh, Dakota Digital. Oh, okay, and then you just drop that in. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, boy, when you have a good relationship with your suppliers. Because some people build stuff, and you get something, and it came from China, and it's like, you don't know who, who, who manufactured it, went through three parties, and yeah. And they ruined, you ruin your reputation based on somebody else's lack of, of uh, you know. Yep, Vintage Air has been a great system for us. Uh, Dakota Digital, we use it in all of our vehicles. They've been a great, great vendor and supplier. But yeah, they make really good product. Yeah, there's a book guy, a guy named Simon Winchester, I bet you would like. It's called Precision, and it's about the history of precision. It's not technical. It just starts with steam engines and how machinists and everybody work to get precision, you know? Like, there's a thing, you ever hear of Morse Law? The heaven. That's, that's with electronics, where every year you double the output and half the size. And it started back, like, in the 70s. And now when you get an iPhone, you literally have billions of connectors that right. are so small you can't even see right. them. And, and they're constantly doubling the output, you know? And uh, like with batteries, you see that every year, it's like, Jesus, now 300, 400, 500, you know? And it, it's really a fascinating book. It just, it starts with sewing machines and watches and eventually, once magnifying glasses came in, you could make stuff even smaller. It's just an interesting read if you like. I like reading about machinery and stuff like that. It is pretty cool. Yeah, and the fun thing is, uh, you can drive this from Miami to, to Orlando. And yeah, you, you know, it's yeah, not going to overheat on you. It's not going to, you know, 
it's a real vehicle. Well, they have so many friends who are not car people, but get seduced by somebody who's going to build them a hot rod, you know? And they don't work. They just don't work. And they don't, they're not good enough to know how to fix it. And they get all frustrated. And, you know, and it ruins the industry for everybody. Uh, the classic look with the modern feel and technology is yeah. what we're going for. Yeah, yeah. That works. That works for me. And, it, and everything works together. And these items that are in this truck look like they belong in it, too, you know? Yeah, well, I think the key to your success is the fact that it's all new components. I mean, a lot of people I know, they're redoing Broncos. All right, but they're buying a second-hand rear end from somebody. Like, okay, you, get, you know, you got to save money somewhere, you know? I mean, but it's got to make a profit, I guess, but you don't know what you're getting, you know? Yeah, we want it to last. I mean, I just went through that with that big 600 you saw that I was driving the other day, and, I, and all of a sudden I stopped. And what happened was the bands in the transmission, everything in the transmission was new, except the bands look good, they just relined them. Okay, but the band is 60-year-old metal. Right. And it just, <laughs> fatigue, just gave out. You know, and it wasn't the guy, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the builder's fault. He thought, you know, metal's metal. I mean, it's really gonna, you know, like, you move in a three-ton vehicle like that thing. How's it feel? It feels great. I mean, it's, like you say, it drives like a modern vehicle. And the coilovers are just enough to give it a little bit of aggressiveness. Right, right. But smooth at the same time. You know, back when I was a kid, you know, people would make fun of trucks that had all the fancy stuff, air conditioning and leather seat. You know, you weren't like a truck guy. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, but then it all changed. Now yeah. now it's got to have, you know, heated seats and TV screen and, you know, TV screen, computer screen. Okay. <laughs> you get no. Is this your, this your defrost? It is, yeah. We made those just for this truck. This is a very nice dash. Who does this for you? Uh, we wrapped it, but you're able to buy this dash new. Okay. So we obviously matched it to, uh, wrapped it to match the seat. Um, but we got a company here right down the street called Just Dashes. Uh huh. It's unbelievable. They do the most. They do Porsches. They do Trans Am, Pontiac, Camaro, exact factory to the point where you go, you can't tell. Wow. Well, it, it's unbelievable what a nice job they do. It's not inexpensive, but it's done properly. It's done right. All the stitching just like this, nicely done. I guess 1970 they're starting to put just a modicum of padding on there. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. You owned any Ford trucks before? Uh, yeah, I had the had the very first Harley Davidson Lightning back in 2001. Oh, that's cool. That was kind of, I liked that piece, that was a nice piece. My first vehicle was a 34 Ford pickup. I got a Cyclone truck down there, that's not bad. It's too light for heavy work and too heavy for light work. Right. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. But it, it was it was the fastest vehicle GM produced in 1991. Right. It was faster in the 60 than the Corvette. Hilarious, the V6. And I, I feel like this truck, if you're not a truck guy, it, it makes you feel like it want to be a truck guy. Right, right. You yeah, know? Yeah. And it looks stock enough to be stock, like it was maintained. And the guy just cleaned it and, you know. You got to really look at it to understand the changes. Right. You know, because they blend in so well. Yeah, like the headlights, for example. You got those, put those LEDs in there. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. these come with the big six yeah big six uh 302s um, yeah, right, 302, yeah yeah the old four speed where you're jamming your knuckles yeah. in the dash yeah yeah uh, it tracks very nicely it doesn't cool. wander that is one thing we focus on on all the, the the trucks that we build is how well they drive right you know it can look it can look great but if it doesn't drive good you're not going to enjoy it you're not going to want it yeah so we put and the a steering wheel centers up nicely. Yeah, so. This guy brought a thing here, and, and the steering wheel was this way. When you're going straight, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just psychologically. <laughs> yeah. It's an aftermarket steering wheel, so probably not as reliable as an OEM. But it's smaller, isn't it? It is. Yep, you're used to about like this, like you're driving a school bus on that original Now, truck. is this uh, 
So this is Ford factory power steering. Is that integrated with the motor? Or uh, is it separate? It, it is integrated with the motor. Okay. Yeah, nice to drive. It doesn't beat you up, doesn't wear you out, you know. It's not like you're... Yeah, you're not fighting it. Right. It tracks the road really well. Do you have 350s too, or is this about as big as you go? Uh, 250s would be as big as we go. Yeah, yeah. We are going to do an F100 uh, tool drive. And this is a pretty beefy chassis under this truck. I mean, yeah. If you think 350, it really was just all chassis design. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's it's pretty solid under there. And you put coils in it, correct? Yep, That's Fox it. Yeah, coilovers. Yeah. What did it have? Um, Lee Springs original? Uh, twin I beam. Twin I beam. Oh, okay. Probably gets pretty good mileage, I would imagine, does it? Uh, I would probably guess probably 16 to 17, maybe. Yeah, it's not bad. What size wheels are these? Uh, 17 inch or 18 inch steel wheels, I'm sorry. Is that uh, the stock size? Uh, stock had 15s. Well, I, thought, I thought you had 15s. Yeah, 15s. Uh, we did 33s. It's a really good combo with that 18 inch wheel, 33 inch tire. And the guy that invented the step plate that comes out when you open the door. He's got to be a gazillion there. Everybody, every, everybody bought that. I mean, yep. and it really works. You can have a 600 pound guy stand on that thing and you're fine. You know, I mean, I'm amazed at how well those work. I've got one, I got it on my Bronco and my wife loves it. It's just easy to get in. But it, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and once you've had it or used it, you can't live without but, it. Yeah, yeah, doing that step ladder thing. <laughs> This is actually the most I've ridden in this truck on this side of the steering wheel. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. You get to look at it from the customer. Yeah, yeah, way. I like it. You got all kinds of room in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We put close to a thousand miles on this truck already, so. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. We definitely put it through its paces. When does it go to the customer? Uh, in about two weeks. We'll get it back to the shop and do a final once over on it and send her home. Do these motors, when you get these coyote motors, they don't require any braking. You, you're ready to go, right? Just boom. Uh, yeah, they're ready to go. There's no keep it below 3,500 for 600 no. miles or any of that. No, uh, we'll brake in the rear axle. You know, yeah. you got to put some heat cycles on that. Right. The engines are ready to go. We torture test everything that we build. Yeah. We try and brake it. We want it to brake. We want it to brake on us, not our customer. You know, that way we can find the flaws. You know, that little bit of transfer case wine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you gotta have that. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I watch old movies from the 40s, it, there's always that second gear wind. Every GM car has a ring. Yeah, yeah. Just here. Yeah. yeah, you get a little bit of noise, and it's gonna be a real truck. It seals nicely here. These are all new seals, I imagine, correct? Yep. So, I mean, that's great that it's all new rubber, it's all new everything. But the stuff that kills you when you build, build a vehicle, it's not the engine that power chain people. It's all whistling, you know, it's some little annoying thing that you can't figure out what the hell it is. You know? a, a little bit of wind noise, and it's got these California style mirrors on it. And, you yeah, know, but that has more to do with original design than right, anything right. else. It's 1970s, a long time ago. This, this truck probably averaged probably 40 miles an hour average speed. Duh, duh. Because it, it wasn't freeway driving with it, it's all farm or two-lane road or whatever, so you're not really so concerned about all of that. They were workhorses. They weren't yeah, meant to yeah. get out and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Clydesdales. Yeah. So how'd you, did you start this business or were you had your own shop or what? I, I'm, I'm just a manager. Uh, I've, I've been a painter most of my life. I was a painter for every bit of 15 years right. and, and then, uh, then started to, to manage certain parts of the shop. but. So the guy whose car this is is going to be watching, hey, w hey, wait a minute, that looks like my truck. <laughs> but really relaxing to drive. I mean, it is modern. In some ways, it's better just this big greenhouse windscreen and the giant windows and, you know, the small A-pillar really makes it nice. And I, I, I'm sorry, I love vent windows. I think it's just great. Out of all the, the vehicles and trucks that we've built, this is probably my favorite. Yeah. Every time I get in it, it feels like the first time. Oh, I just noticed a digital speedometer too, as well as the analog. Yep, it's actually got a digital tack. Yeah, I saw uh, that, yeah. Yeah. That's the cool thing about, you know, Dakota Digital, they're thinking about the old school versus the new school, you know, putting a little bit of technology in it to appeal to everybody, but you yeah. know, it still has that original look. Another great part about this truck is 
you know, the billet parts that are in it. Yeah. You know, they're, they're directly the same parts that go in a Bronco. Right. You know, that's, that's something that the, the auto manufacturers had to do, you know, in that time. They had to be able to recycle parts right. from one model to another. And it still works in our favor, you know, now. We're able to take a part that we've already developed for the Bronco and, you know, use it in the F series. Yeah, it is funny how that works, you know. I mean, uh, I remember years ago, uh, a company called Carbon Revolution came to my garage. They were making carbon fiber wheels for a Lamborghini Porsche. They were $20,000 a wheel. Wow. They only weighed like 12 or 13 pounds. And we put them on a Porsche, and you could you could really feel the difference. Okay. And I said, well, how many people want to buy these? It's $100,000 for four wheels. He said, well, we're working with the original equipment manufacturer, blah, blah. So like four years go by, I buy a, a, a Ford Shelby GT350, the R model one. And I noticed those look like carbon revolution wheel. And Ford, the car was $62,000 with five years ago it was $100,000 wheels. But through manufacturing and, and just Technology. efficiency, they're able to get the price down to I don't know, probably three, four thousand dollars a wheel, right. so they can put it on a Mustang. Right. You know? yeah. I mean, pretty cool. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. this is, it's Velocity, not Restoration. Velocity, modern classic. Uh, Kobe, thank you very much, my friend. Yeah. Thanks for bringing this. They're down in Pensacola, Florida. Check out their website. If you're looking for a modified truck or a Bronco, and uh, you know. 14 weeks guaranteed, right? Yes, sir. That's pretty good. Hey, can't beat that. So, anyway, I'm glad we got a chance to help out a small American business, and uh, maybe you will too. See you guys next week. Thanks, everybody.